Hello everyone, this is Oak Chef Cooper, and I'm here with more Pirate Warriors 3. I'm playing as Marco. And we're going after Fujitora. I'm showing off Marco the Phoenix. His special attacks have the ability to leech health from his enemies. Unfortunately, I didn't have enough resources to upgrade him. 
So he is unfortunately weak.
against the guy. Okay, so far so good. Just regular Tetris. Ah, see? There. Those are your new friends. That's the tricky thing about this game. Every stage is different, and there's some catch to all. Sometimes you can figure it out from the description. Sometimes you have no idea. May I introduce the electric barrier? What the hell does that mean? Okay, again. Normal Tetris. Whoa. Okay, now you see what the catch is. Every level is like this. It keeps you on your toes. There's all kinds of tricks in this game. You have some with only right angles, some with indestructible blocks, some that switch which block you're going to get. The list goes on. The original Tetris, despite being fun, is still at its core just a dead one. It gets faster and faster. So this is a great contract. Many challenges that you can beat and rest. You earn money from the challenges that you can use to make the levels easier. Wow, this sounds great, right? Yeah. Yeah. It's insidious, is what it is. Between the upbeat music, great graphics, easy challenges, fun riddles, you're going to miss the fact that this game has to kill you. And you're probably saying, well, of course you can die, Rob. It's a video game. You don't understand. Because you're probably thinking there are lots of hard games out there. You can die a lot, and they're really unfair. There's a ghost, battle toes, I want to be the guy, so this is much more quietly sinister. This game doesn't want to just kill you, it wants to watch you squirm and suffer. Then, when it finally does kill you, it doesn't want to kill your player. You, some of you are friendly. Logging it out. Here's some footage from one of the easier levels where I made mistakes. I had to get one line, but I messed up as this compressor was freezing to the ground to crush me. It's something out of a song. Oh no! I don't think I'm gonna make it! Do you see this? What you're looking at now isn't a mistake in it. When you die once in this game, the whole game quits. You don't lose a life, you don't go back to the level select, the whole game quits. I'm sure the programmers would take it. They thought they could get away with it without being sued. They forced their computer to shut down, or start deleting random data. Hey, better yet, find a way to send electric shocks into your body. <laughs> Holy crap! How many games do something like this? And if you get kicked out of the game, you get to go for that long intro all over again a single time. You can speed it up some, but the point is one death in this game has big consequences. Uh, oh, I'm tapping the buttons right now. There. Now you actually can avoid this if you hit escape just before you die. Then you'll only go back to the main menu. It makes me feel like a fire pilot hitting the emergency attack when my plane crashes into the ground. Even then, you'll be seeing this animation a lot. Looks awesome the first time. Not so awesome the Do you remember seeing earlier the option to save your game? But guess what? You have to pay. You have to pay a lot. Most of the time you don't even get that much. One save is $80. That's a lot of levels on average. And these levels are going to be trying to kill you. Levels on this first table are a show. They're just there to give you a false sense of safety. Along with the whole great and happy vibe of these games. We designed to lower your defenses. Then you get trapped. Then they move in so they can hurt Salvation. 
they come at a cost. You don't have nearly enough money to justify the Kyra to pass the level of sky. You have to be a miser, ration out your money, making it stretch as far as possible. Look at this stage. I can't see anything, and I need to make four lines not knowing what's below me. That's ten. But if I use a special item, now I can breeze through it, no problem. But there is a problem. The problem is that that's fifty dollars I just blew, and I'm gonna need a lot more than that if I hope to survive this later on. By spending fifty dollars now, I'm gonna run out of cash and get myself killed later. It feels a little like my own life. So I can't play this game casual. Now that I know what I'm up against, I need to go back and load my game. Play this level blind so I can hold on to that precious $50 for later. Once you get to the third or fourth stage, you gradually start realizing this isn't so much a fun puzzle game as it is a survival mode. In the later levels, there's always a certain terror entering a level where the kid is too cryptic to understand. You don't always know what's coming, but it's never new. So the more you save, the more you're damning yourself on later levels when you need fun. And you don't have it because you were playing this game to have fun. Battles. So what this does is create this feverish mentality. You try to push yourself as far as you possibly can in between the saves. Going full well, and if you die, you lose everything. It makes this game so nice to make. I do not recommend playing this game in a hard condition. Let's talk about the music. The music in here is generally pretty good. However, they cheat a By that, I mean the majority of the tracks in this game are just synth remixes of classical. If you're a classical music fan, you might find this game a neat little quiz to see if the pieces are recognized. This track. I actually only do this as the help of Hitchcock presents the, but it's a classical piece. Funeral March from a marionette. But it's actually a pretty metal way for classical music. So while this game cheats by using classical music, its picks are pretty good. If I ever hear you, yeah, I get the sax one more time. It does have a little bit of original music though. The slideshow intro music is great. <laughs> anyone inclined to do a remix of it. I'll listen to it. Okay, so let's address the elephant. What's the deal with this guy? My first thought was that he was sort of your guide in all this, but now that I've explained the lurking evil contained within this game, I don't know anymore. I mean, look at him. He has this sort of Freudian look to him, so that's kind of cool, but something is off here. Look at his clothes. He dresses like a 50-year-old colorblind fat What's going on here? No socks. Is he naked under that coat? Has he killed before? This role here is really unclear. Reports your name, he's the middleman for buying your life-saving gear, but then later on he'll explicitly make bets against you at some points in the game. Maybe he's just meant to be like a tough coach or trainer to make you better before a paranoid Tetris player. But I don't know, I'm just getting this sinister fire. If you're a big guy, you'd be perfect for being cosmic. Nobody would know who the hell you are, so now. But it's worth mentioning, I have not actually been in this game. Back in the day, I only played the share of God. Now that the full version is free, I better understand where this heart of darkness of a game is headed. I made it to stage 5 out of 7. I think I could beat this game if I stayed at it, but I really hit the enjoyment threshold once I hit this stage. Like if I was in prison and somehow had access to this game, I would absolutely be playing. I mean, what the hell else would I do? Plus, I'm curious how it ends. The problem is that I started to understand all too well what I was going to have to do to beat this game. These later levels are less about Tetris and more about intense resource management and planning. You maximize what little money you have as efficiently as possible and a little too close to home. Anyway, if anyone watching this wants to continue where I left off, I am including a link to my saved games along with the link to the game itself in the description. One thing that is pretty rad about this is that if you try to beat this game, you can get it into uncharted territory. I looked online, I cannot find any mention of playthrough 
whatever. They get to this game. If anyone has beaten this game, they're not talking. From all we know, whoever beats this game will be the first person in the history to do so. The odds are somebody has beaten them. This game came out 20 years ago, so if anyone beat it, it could be dead by now. For me, that's some of the beauty of this game. You're seeing things few other people. I mean, how many modern games do you say no one has seen the end? Hell, nowadays, companies try to stop people from posting the ending up online before the game is even released. Not here. If you beat this game, Okay, here's a 
Guys, I'm going to call it here. First episode of the day. Thank you all for watching. This has been Orc Chef Cooker. Please like, comment, and subscribe. This has been Orc Chef Cooker, signing out.